Chilcot and impartiality. Sir John Chilcot said the inquiry will be unbiased and impartial in its approach. Its aim? To examine lessons to be learnt. Just how impartial was his team? Did they have cross-examining skills? Two proud Zionists, an ex-English ambassador, a baroness. No one from Iraq. Professor Sir Lawrence Friedman, author of Blair's Chicago 1998 speech, prior to 9-11 on regime change and invasion of Iraq, must, as Professor of War Studies at UCL, be aware that Nuremberg 1946 judgments held planning and executing an aggressive war the greatest crime of all. Sir Martin Gilbert, the inspired author of Churchill's biography, felt that one day Blair would be judged historically in the ranks of Roosevelt and Churchill. Did he in the course of the inquiry continue to hold that view? Or did his smile grow thin? Sir Roderick Lynn, as an advisor to J.P. Morgan Chase with banking interests in Iraq and to British Petroleum with new assets from Iraq, did he brush aside the knowledge that economic exploitation of an occupied country was judged at Nuremberg with imprisonment? The fourth member of the team, Baroness Usha Prasha, made little contribution. The Iraq film clips of Chilcot reports have all been seen by Ms. Sarah Goom, legal advisor to Sir John. She was asked if they would be made public. She reluctantly agreed that if they held evidence of criminal acts, they would be referred by the inquiry to the appropriate authorities, thus complying with Article 146 of the 1949 Geneva Conventions 4. This has not happened. Prevarication might itself be a war crime. In anticipation that the Chilcot inquiry would not over-concern itself with the fate of Iraq, Chilcot Reports has, in a very small way, contributed to filling that breach.